frankly, if I lived right now in the Pacific Northwest, I'd be considering moving. Seriously. The gist of it is this. The federal government estimates 13,000 Americans will die in a major earthquake and tsunami in the Pacific Northwest. It's not a question of weather, but when. This earthquake is coming, and it's overdue. This morning, the most popular article on the New Yorker's website is rattling many Americans. The really big one examines a titanic earthquake and tsunami, but not where you might imagine. A fault line called the Cascadia Subduction Zone runs for 700 miles off the Pacific Northwest coast. Experts think it will trigger the worst national disaster in North American history, and it is overdue. It's predicted to be worse than Hurricane Katrina, worse than the San Francisco earthquake of 1906. Scientists and FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, are warning of a pending doom for the Pacific Northwest. An earthquake along a little-known fault line that would kill thousands and affect millions. Consider that the magnitude 9.0 earthquake in Japan, just a few years ago, remember that, killed more than 15,000 people in the north of Japan and injured thousands of others. Seismologists say that the quake that will strike on our Pacific Northwest coastline should be even stronger at up to a 9.2. They call such a quake a margin rupture quake, and it's every bit as bad as it sounds. Here's the reason for it. Our entire continent sits on the North American tectonic shelf, right? Plate, I should say. Off the coast of the Pacific Northwest from the top of Washington State all the way down to Northern California. This is it. And another plate called the Juan de Fuca is trying to slide up under North America, but it's, it's stuck. We have an illustration over here in the big wall. Let me show you what this is. This is our continent here. This, the, this is the Cascada Mountains. This is the Cascadia, what do they call it? The Cascadia what? Bridge. The Cascadia Bridge. I, I was actually asking him, but thank you. The North American plate here and the Juan de Fuca plate here. This one's sliding up under, and eventually this is going to go down, send a huge wall of water up. That wall will go all the way over to Japan, and the other will come onto our, onto our shore within 15 minutes. And when it slips, it will unleash not only a colossal earthquake, but also that tsunami, 700 miles long, and in some places up to a 100-foot high wall of water and whatever it's pushing, like houses and dump trucks and, and, and schools. Thousands and thousands will not escape. The New Yorker quotes a FEMA official who says, and I quote, our operating assumption is that everything west of Interstate 5 will be toast. Everything west of Interstate 5 is gone. That's Seattle, Tacoma, Portland and Olympia, Salem and Eugene, wiped out altogether about 7 million people. That's not including tourists. So think of summertime. The New Yorker reports that FEMA calculations indicate the disaster will damage or destroy about a million buildings, including 3,000 schools and one-third of all fire stations. And perhaps the worst part of all of this, these sorts of earthquakes happen at regular intervals in exactly this part of the world, have forever. On average, according to seismologists, about every 240 years. So when was the last one of these? These massive 9.2 or so earthquakes? Well, the last one was more than 300 years ago, the year 1700. It struck in the Pacific Northwest and sent a 600-foot wave of water all the way to Japan. So right now, on average, the Pacific Northwest is decades overdue for the really, really big one. CBS News Science and Futures contributor Michio Kakuka is a physics professor at the City University of New York. Good morning. Morning. So it's overdue. When will it might come? Well, this is the mother of all earthquake faults. It can pack wallop 30 times that of the San Andreas Fault. So forget ho all the Hollywood hype about the San Andreas Fault. We're talking about an earthquake, a 9.0 similar to what devastated northern Japan, which killed over 15,000 people and caused a quarter of a trillion dollars in property damage. Cascadia subduction zone stretches about 700 miles from Cape Mendocino, California to Vancouver, Canada. 
Big cities expected to be affected include Seattle and Portland. Some scientists believe the earthquake, when it goes off, will reach between 8.7 and 9.2 on the Richter scale and cause a tsunami. Airmen and soldiers conduct joint training in Washington to support domestic operations in preparation for natural disaster. As president of the Portland Post of the Society of American Military Engineers, I felt a real need, a real desire to mobilize engineers to help better prepare our region for a Cascadia earthquake. Army and Air Guard elements successfully operate in a joint mission environment. The only way to move supplies and support to stranded residents in need after such an event would be by air. It's really great to see the state move in a direction of supporting domestic operations at this level. It allows us to really be much more dynamic and respond uh, to the state and to our community. The last big one was 315 years ago. We think the cycle time is roughly 240 years. Do the math. We are overdue in this calculation with another big one. We've known about the Cascadia subduction zone for quite a while. It's a serious risk. A big earthquake in the Pacific Northwest could be the worst disaster the country has faced uh, historically. 